Um, um, that does come off there, and you can also lower it. Hello? Cool. Well, hi. Right. hi, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Will, uh, William Riley. Um, you can definitely call me Will. It's super cas, simpler. Um, so, uh, I'm a developer, obviously, in full stack, and I'm building, um, I'm building a business. It's uh, an accelerator called Match the Keyboard, where I basically take in um, tech companies and then make them bigger. And uh, the first company that I'm building, this is like my, my baby, uh, is called Hubdia, and basically it's, a, it's a, a search engine, it's a hub for your media, it's a search engine and a social platform that takes everything and organizes it uh, for artists in contextually relevant ways. Uh, it's, it's a meaningful way to organize stuff, but just to, say, to, to take a step back, um, it's a social platform, and social platforms uh, require high engagement if they're going to succeed. And one of the biggest things that's happening right now, and they're, they're actually implementing this in a lot of places, even Twitter, is um, something called HTTP2. It's a new version of, uh, of uh, that protocol that um, basically is responsible, for the most part, uh, handling uh, how, how assets are loaded on a client, basically, just to keep it simple. And that matters to me a lot because um, uh, fast sites equal high engagement equal success. Like, I, I need engagement. I need this to work. Um, okay, so why change HTTP? It's such a, like, an archaic and sort of, like, uh, statuesque, it's, it's just this thing. It's, right, it's like, I don't know how else to explain it. It's just like metal. You don't change metal, I guess. Um, unless it rusts. I don't know. But this is it has rusted. Um, it's about 15 years old. Um, the, the original RFC was written and uh, published uh, June 1999. Um, and that's uh, RFC 22616. Two, if anyone cares, read it uh, or not. It's going to be relevant soon anywhere. Anyway. Um, and the way that that RFC was written, I mean, this is 15 years ago, what we didn't expect is uh, the internet to get so heavy, um, so bloated. And I think Matt Steele, is Matt Steele here? No? no. Uh, at, at, <laughs> at, at the very, very first uh, Beer & Co. that I went to, he gave this little sort of, um, uh, whatever, like a little tidbit of information, well, that uh, basically there are some sites that are bigger than uh, the Firefox executable, um, which is like a big deal. That's that's crazy how bloated a site can be. Um, it's also a lot more interactive. So you're dealing with people touching the site itself instead of using like a medium like a, a point and click device. They're touching it. There's more of this dependency for a uh, site to be you know, funner. Um, and it's also mobile. There are so many satellite things. And then, oh, man, we have IoT coming, which is a, which is like this dramatic deal. Like, how are we going to deal with that? Um, and so, HTTP2. Um, yeah, so for some context, uh, 4G networks are, uh, right now, currently, um, for each request that's made, that's initiated, you have like 150 milliseconds of uh, this, this um, latency. And then, for 3G networks, it's even worse. It's 400 milliseconds, and that's like super bad. <laughs> if it, I, I know if you've been on a 3G cellular device, you can relate with that fucking frustration of like having your phone. And you're like, oh, oh. Um, and that's that's yeah, that's per HTTP request, which sucks. It like hurts. Um, developers were were sort of conditioned to also hack. Uh, HTTP to expose some of the vulnerabilities that we found throughout the, the 15 years that we've been using it. Um, and we do see things like spriting, uh, where we sort of tile a bunch of images instead of one image and then load that. Um, we inline CSS so that uh, maybe like a super big um, base64 encoded image is slapped on the site because it's going to load faster or, or render faster. Um, and we, we also like shard images and videos so that it, you know you can have a really big, really gorgeous image of like a mountain or something, but you need to cut that up so that it loads right and quick uh, for, for the user. 
because there's a lot of stuff that could be uh, load old or whatever. And then we also concatenate. Uh, we combine CSS and JavaScript, which is great, like super awesome. But it can get big. Uh, and yeah, we, we do this to eliminate requests like head of line. That's pretty much where a browser is only going to load four things, maybe eight things, and then they are going to wait. And until those things are done, you can't load anymore. And it's like there's not there's just that that's where the frustration comes in. <clears throat> and so HTTP one uh, point one is built for uh, these these short little requests, short bursts of just like um, uh, I need this image, I need this image. But TCP is actually built for long lived requests where it's connecting and holding that connection. And there's so there's this sort of you know. Uh, what's the term? Like a, they don't work well together. It's like fitting an orange in a puzzle piece or something. And HTTP2, TTP2 is synergy, and that's really corporate. <laughs> but it it it's, it rocks because it, it starts to solve a lot of those problems uh, that we're currently having, especially as we're going into like a more digitally connected era where we do have IoT to consider, and this is, HTTP2 is much more considerate of what's going to happen, which rocks, like, super much, super much. <laughs> um, so HTTP2 is a rewrite of, yes, I was right, uh, RFC 2616. <laughs> 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 Those little, like, yes. Uh, so it's, it was rewritten for clarity uh, to remove those, those sort of hacks that we have, you know, um, uh, 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 that I mentioned that I'm blanking on, whatever. Uh, speed and a lot more. That I, by the way, I am not the pinnacle like resource on HTTP2. Uh, if there's any video that I can share with you, I'm gonna share it. Uh, yeah, like every single link that this is associated with, this talk or whatever, you're gonna see that link too because it's gonna go into much more detail. It's actually by the guy who wrote, uh, who was involved with the browser people to uh, come up with HTTP2. Um, oh, and for a little like, I don't know, history, it's sort of fun. Google wrote Speedy. Speedy uh, was taken by a bunch of other different people, and then it was uh, spat out as um, HTTP2. So, I don't know, that's always fun, I guess. History. Um, this is everything it does. I'm not going to go into detail, but yeah, it, it cleans up latency. Uh, TCPs, it, it starts to utilize TCP stuff, and um, just look at that later. It's it's also clear. It, the the first RFC was it wasn't uh, communicative of what was the browser's responsibility and what was the server's responsibility, the client and server like relationship and all that other jazz. Um, and so this starts to really define it, which is great, especially moving forward. Um, and the idea is that everything is sent on one TCP connection, which is great. Um, that basically means you're going to have a bunch of images sent in on the wire at once. Uh, so there's no, there's no more um, consideration for uh, like a large image. Um, it's, it's sent, but it has some sort of or not some sort of, it has prioritization and other other things that are taken into consideration, but it definitely, definitely helps. And sharding, sharding is still uh, useful in this context, but it loads faster and it's much more smarter in the way that it loads. <sighs> yeah, and it really does, I, I do have to like emphasize this, because it really does require a new mindset. It's very different. I'm not, I'm not really capturing the essence of how different it is, but there's there's more stuff to consider. No, there's less stuff to consider, but more, uh, but newer approaches to those stuff, because like I said, those hacks that we're talking about, really sort of unnecessary and maybe maybe superfluous at times. Uh, yes, prioritization is a big deal. Um, basically, the way I sort of envision it is while you're scrolling, uh, let's say you load a page and you scroll all the way to the bottom and the footer images are going to be prioritized because you want those to be seen by the user instead of the stuff that's at the top because that's, what lo that's what's loaded at the top. 
Um, header compression is super cool. Flow control, I'm not going to get into that because I don't really super understand it. It's just, it's really smart in the way that it loads. That's, that's a good way of explaining it. Um, header compression rocks because, so when you load, let's say 50 images, all of those images are going to have the same headers. Um, or even if you have Ajax requests that uh, maybe you're, I don't know why, actually you would load like 50 Ajax. That's a bad idea. Um, but let's stick with the images one just for whatever. Uh, they all share the same thing, but let's say maybe they have a zero one for the uh, the asset name that you're getting. That's the only bit difference. Two bits. That's it. There's there should be no reason for all of that repeated stuff. What you see is a sort of um, you see a blast of HTTP request headers, and then you see a bunch of assets and then a blast of HTTP request headers, and then a bunch of assets. It's much more streamlined, it's uh, clearer in how it goes about its business, but we're just gonna have to adapt to some of the, some of the sort of, yeah, very new stuff, and so it's, it's a change. Are you saying that it, G, it can gzip across multiple requests? Yes. Really? Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, it's, it, it really is incredible. <laughs> and there's, awesome. You get a, a ridiculous amount of speed increase just from this alone. And it's, to me, remarkable. I've been playing with it uh, not as much as I should be because uh, I've got a lot to do. Well, I mean, who doesn't? But, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, it definitely has helped in how I've seen it. Um, for If you ever want to reference like a place to delve into what it's doing, check out, uh, I think Twitter is using it everywhere. So they're super bleeding edge, and you can see it in the nightly builds of Firefox, uh, the um, RFC version 13 is in the nightly build of Firefox right now, and they're starting to bring it into other contexts, other browsers, and, and yeah, so it's, it's picking up speed. It's so have, has Twitter, so when Twitter implements HTTP2, do they take different front-end development approaches after that's implemented, or do they fork their like server-side code to deliver different? I don't know. Because you don't um, have to do, like you mentioned, you don't have to do CSS sprites, or maybe you wouldn't do like a font icon or something. Mm -hmm. um, have they like started to ignore some of those? I think so. Yeah. Uh, first of all, and then second of all, it depends a on. So they're definitely using it on their app. They, they use HTTP2 exclusively on their app, period. Um, but it's also like, it's also um, like HTTPS, where you can sort of switch off those protocols and then have different sites that are delivered to that port. But the idea is that for, um, for when this goes live, so to speak, the idea is that it is going to be like a perfect drop in. Just perfect. Hopefully. So they wouldn't necessarily have to change anything. There's you're still gonna still gonna be faster yeah. to sprite yeah. stuff. It's just yeah. less important. Or less less damaging there if are you some don't cases where it will actually be slower, but they're probably not worth changing or like bifurcating your entire front end process just to manage it. Yeah. Server push is another feature that basically you can tell, you can communicate between the client and the browser on what you need to be sending. Um, that's that. That's also that sort of relationship that uh, I was talking about. You scroll to the bottom and then uh, it just loads. So, I mean, that's really abstract. There's other ways to do it. I, again, I'm not the end all be all like resource, but still. Yeah, out of box, 50% gain. That's what they've been talking about a lot, pushing it. Um, and yeah, that's super exciting, just as a straight up um, number, if that helps. I'm not really a percentage guy, I want to see it happening. Um, so, I said let's talk and drink beers. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're in a play, we're in a help like place. Um, I'm pretty sure they don't have beer here. <laughs> <laughs> but we can drink Coke instead, and that's cool. Oh uh, yeah, we're going to DJ's dugout after this, so... Oh really? If you want to drink beer, we're going to go over to DJ's dugout. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs>